All righty, everyone. Sorry, I'm a little late. Sorry. Sorry, I'm a little late. Uh, had to set up a few things and uh, get everything in order. So, Thanos on Throne will be joining us today for this nice little airing. Why are my lights so bright? That's a good question. I did move some of them, so some of the pops are kind of now opened because I had to make space for uh, one of this week's pickup on the pops. So, yeah. Um, you know, kind of kill time while some people join. This guy, honestly, he's he's a very well done pop, honestly. Um, just him sitting on the throne is pretty badass. But yeah. So he'll be joining us today. Uh, let's see. All right. So where do we begin? Let's see. Pops for comics. Pops for comics. Pops for comics. Hey, sir. How's it going? I was about to write back to you. Um, all right. So where do I begin? Um, comic book wise, it's kind of light this week. Um, not much here. Uh, really laid back this weekend. Uh, really only did some pop hunting this morning. Uh, at a pop and swap meet that Uncle Figs has, which is a local store. Uh, all he does is sell pops. So uh, I was there today during the event, uh, you know, pretty much hanging out and seeing what I could trade for, trying to get rid of other stuff, other things that I have that I really don't want um, from my impulse buys back in the day last year. So, yeah, uh, I think I'll start with the comics. This, I mean, I have enough pops that I could probably divide it, but... Um, so, Corka, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, it's down south by me, uh, he's actually by Tamiami Airport, um, he has, it's in one of the little storefronts along Tamiami, the side of Tamiami Airport, the south side of it, it's called Uncle Figs, uh, he does a pop and pop swap meet, uh, once a month, so, I mean, there's a bunch of people showed up today uh, to trade and, and buy and sell. So, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, like I said, I got rid of a lot of my stuff, you know, last year when I decided to go strictly with Marvel only. Uh, just apart from the few things that bring some kind of nostalgia, uh, you know, outside of Marvel are the ones that I get now. Uh, you know, I would love to have... The entire line of Game of Thrones, the entire line of, uh, you know, so many other ones. But if you go down that route, it's just pure mayhem. Um, it's almost like comics, but it, it, it can. I think it's actually worse than comics. Um, I think it can get worse than comics. So I guess I'll start off with Corka. Um I know, Hylia, you know them. Uh, Corka's the local comic store that I have my pull list from. And um, pretty much I have my list with them. They're the closest ones to me, really. Uh, well, I guess you could say there's two, but um, I just, I, I, I've been going to Corka for so long that I just have my pull list with them. I go to Tate's kind of to shop around their back issues because they have a large, large assortment of back issues. Yeah, hi, Leah. Um, Corka, I mean, they get, you know, for the size of the shop, they get a good amount of books, um, of new books. So, I mean, you can't really, I don't know if you've been to Tate's. I'm pretty sure you have. Um, Tate's has a gigantic, enormous wall that is just nothing but new books. And then they have an entire wall down the side of new books that are back issues of that, you know, current series. 
And uh, but Corka does really well, especially the one on A Street and the one in Pines. Um, I think the one on Eighth Street, their their new Comic Book Day selection, it might be bigger than the one in Pines. I think just on size overall. Um, oh wow! All right, thanks for that. That's probably going to be big. Yeah, twenty six year sale at Tate's. Jesus. I'm glad it's at the end of the month. Oh, crap. It's at the end of the month. So, yeah, at the end of the month also. So March 31st, that Sunday, you we have, for the Funko Pop people, um, the Avengers Pops are being released that day. And Think, Think Geek uh, in Dolphin Mall is holding an event for that. Uh, so I'll be there for that. Then I guess I'm going to have to rush over to Corka unless they're doing it on, I mean, on to Tate's, unless they're doing that on Saturday. And Saturday would be perfect. Um, yeah, but we already know, Haile, that you go to a comic book store event on Sunday and you're going to get the scraps. So I'm glad it's Saturday and Sunday because that means that I'll go Saturday uh, first thing in the morning and try to be there first. Yeah, exactly. So... <laughs> Um, Saturday it is for me then, uh, definitely, uh, yeah, Saturday will be it. I'll be there Saturday then, the 30th. Um, all right. Oh, crap. Are you serious? Great. Well, I mean, I can't really complain about that. I did line up for, for Target at 3.30 in the morning. So all in all, I really can't complain. I can't really say much about that, you know? Uh, yeah, so starting off, I'm pretty much doing this alphabetical order for my pickups from Corka. And uh, now nah, I'll probably go like an hour early, but that'd be my most for, for Tate's. Um, first up is... Uh, you guys can see it there. Let's see. That's why I have two of these. So Black Panther versus Deadpool number five. Um, it's been in a pretty good series. I, I have to. I haven't read these pickups yet this week, um, so I haven't had the time. I, I picked them up on Friday actually, so uh i've enjoyed it i love deadpool uh you know the interaction between them two has been pretty neat so not something you know out of this world but it's been it's been a good read so far next up we got cosmic ghost rider destroys the marvel universe number one so obviously this book um i don't know i haven't read it yet so i can't tell you if it's uh great or not um, it's, I mean, it's supposed to pick up, uh, I don't know where it picks up from, but either way, I know Cosmic Ghost Rider was, this is not written by Kate's. I know the first ones were written by Kate's, but, uh, it's supposed to be really good. So let's see, I'll be reading it this week and, and, you know, uh, finding out if I get issue number two or not. I know this thing has a bunch of covers out right now, uh, different variants. I think there's only really one other cover that I want to get, and I think it's the Greg Horn one because I just like how it looks. Uh, he did a pretty good job, in my opinion, on it. So I'm actually looking forward to reading it. Uh, you know, it's I mean it's Cosmic Ghost Rider, so. Next up is Deadpool number 10. Obviously, I'm a very big Deadpool fan, so um, I have, I think, I haven't read since issue six. I may be backed up on this one, uh, but I know that there's something big supposed to happen in this one. Uh, I don't want to say anything or spoil it for anyone, so I'll just keep my mouth shut. Hey, Uncle Figs. 
So hi, Leah. The Uncle Fig's in the chat. He's the one that has the pop and swap meat. Uh, so if you ever want to get into pops, be careful. It can get uh, tricky, but he's the one that does it. Uh, so Deadpool number 10, I know that it's supposed to be something. I know what it is. I don't want to say it in case other people, you know, no spoilers or whatever. So, But I know something big is supposed to happen in it. And I'm definitely looking forward to reading it. And, you know, having Spider-Man inside of the Kingpin's grasp was pretty neat. Wow. Uh, yeah. So that way you guys can see it. You know, this one um, was kind of interesting to me. I picked it up now that I've seen Captain Marvel. And I know that they've been coming out with variant covers of the scrolls. Uh, you know, from like, I think they, I had one last week for Venom. They did a Venom uh, variant of scrolls. So they started out a new series called Meet the Scrolls. So that's the regular A cover. And then here's the Scotty Young cover. Now, Scotty Young is awesome. Uh, to me, he's he's a great artist. I love his renderings of these little guys. And, uh, you know, the way he does them, it reminds me like he's drawing like if they were pops. So, uh We'll do hi, Leah. I'll see you later. So, yeah, love these two covers. Uh, looking forward to reading it and seeing what they do. Um, it's a new line, so, or shall I say, a new series. One of my, I got to say, one of my favorite series right now going on is the Black Order. So here we have the fifth installment or the fifth issue of the Black Order with the variant cover of Ebony Maw. And I got to say that these these two covers, the A and B, are, are fantastic. Um, seeing Ebony Maul in, in Infinity War was, was pretty cool. And uh, now that they have their own series, it's pretty neat. And it's been great, honestly. Uh, one through four has been awesome. I have every single one. I have the A and B covers because I love the facial portraits that they've been doing on them. Uh, but, yeah. So that's Ebony Maw from Infinity War. That That's the variant cover. And then the the regular cover is him being surrounded with all his magic and all the guns. So next up, next up we have the Immortal Hulk. I wasn't able to get the A cover. This is actually the Spider Villains variant cover, which is the B cover, I believe. Now, we all know that this book has been on fire lately, and I've read all the way up until 13. And honestly, I can see why. Uh, luckily, thanks to my buddy Richard, he sent me a Mortal Hulk 1, which I did not have. Uh, so here's Immortal Hulk number 14, the variant cover. Uh, next up, we have Spawn 294. It's on that road for number 300. And this cover just came out amazing. I love the green on it. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see Spawn, and it just looks so awesome. I'm waiting for them to make some Spawn Pops. They need to make Spawn Pops, honestly. And finally, for comic books, we have Uncanny X-Men number 13, which has been an okay read. It hasn't been bad or great, um, really, uh, but it's okay. Uh, I, I'll still keep reading them. Uh, you know, I enjoy them, so it is what it is. So for comic books, that's really it. Um, that was my pull list and stuff like that. From Corka, now we're going to move on to some pop action. So let's move this out of the way. And so for comic book, that's pretty much it. 
So I'm going to start off with this one arrived in the mail actually Saturday. Yeah, I had pre-ordered him. Um, he's actually the fan vote winner. Doctor Strange, the Marvel Studios' first 10 years uh, gold chrome. Uh, he actually looks, he, I would say he's probably one of my favorite ones next to uh, the Groot one, which was the first one that they released. But this one, uh, honestly, with his whole, with the whole cape flowing in the background looks really nice. Then, uh, from the mail, we also got... This guy. So let me finish cracking them open. As you can probably read. As you can probably read from the box as I crack this open, you should know what it is. Um, And yes, this is another 10 inch. This is Giant Man from Ant Man and the Wasp. So, this is the pop where he, if you remember correctly from Ant Man and the Wasp, uh, he pretty much turned into the gigantic 50 foot tall man. Um, as you know, all my 10 inch pops go out of the box. I do not keep these in any box whatsoever because the boxes can get very very large so I've already made a space for him he'll be going right next to the Hulk oh well that sucks no nah. and that is what we call production and so here you have him And all his glory. You know, his detailing is pretty neat. Um, everything down to the little belt. He's about to click the button. Uh, you can see his eyes. You know, it, it honestly looks great. Him being that big just makes it even more awesome. Uh, so. Is he top? Is he? Nope. Okay. He's, a, he's actually a good good amount of weight. Um, you can see the, the difference between the 6-inch, I guess you could say. Well, Thanos on Throne isn't much of a 6-inch. He's a little bit bigger because of the base, but uh, pop-wise, you can tell the difference. You can see there. So, also, I did a... Uh, so, moving on to today's Uncle Fig's Pop and Swap Meat. Um, there were a few things that I got from outside the pop and swap. So what ends up happening is the, the, uh, the people that come to sell or trade, they usually bring tables and bring all their pops. Uh, uncle figs has them set up, set up their stands outside the store. Um, so that way you're able to sell and trade with them as well as go inside his store, which he has open. And you can look among, among you know, his major, major collections. Uh, you know, that he, well, they're not really collections, they're also for sale. But he has wall upon wall of pops. And uh, so these two are, I traded, if you saw in the picture that I had uh, used to post the event, I had a Metallic Skeletor. And I used the Metallic Skeletor from uh, Masters of the Universe. And I traded with Uncle Figs for the newly vaulted Silver Surfer. Uh, oh, he still has. So, yes, Uncle Figs, I'm taking him out of the box. Well, not really out of the box, but. So it's Silver Surfer. 
Um, this is one of the original Marvel Universe pops. The logo's obviously been different. Uh, they have the old Marvel Universe logo, which now it just says Marvel on it. Uh, but Silver Surfer was a pop that got recently vaulted, and you know he just looks so awesome on his on, on the surfer board. So yeah, so you guys can see. So let me take the. the it still had some plastic. The. I just realized back in now he's nice and crystal clear for you guys to see him yes sir this is definitely one of my gems this is one of my wants for 2019 um, so glad to have him thanks uncle figs for doing that trade with me and then one that I bought from Uncle Figs was this big guy right here. Um, you guys might know him as a little blue furry creature. And that is Beast. So really happy to have these two guys. Uh, they're both some of the you know original gangsters, I guess you could say. Uh, when it comes to the Funko Pops uh, from Marvel. Um, there's different versions of these guys. Obviously, some of them are uh, flocked and other things like that, but they can get up there in price, so these will have to hold me out until I can get those. I'm just removing the plastic from the box. And so there you have Beast. So that wasn't the only thing I was able to pick up at Uncle Figs. Um, I was able to actually pick up some more from a few of the guys outside. So uh, the Michael Jordan Target edition that I had in the picture as well, um, I was actually able to trade him for one uh, one of the pops that I was missing from my collection. Uh, and to complete the entire series, I was just missing that one. And for Ant-Man and the Wasp, I was only missing the Chase version of the Wasp, which is her, her uh, completely unhooded, but in her uniform. And so I was able to finally get her. And so this is the chase version of the Wasp. Um, the only difference really between this and the, the regular version is the fact that she just has, doesn't have her helmet on. And you can see her face. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Figs. Uh, really appreciate it. You know, I know you uh, you you help a lot in this community with the pops and getting them into people's hands. So, you know, the event that you do helps a lot of people. Uh, so I'm I'm really happy for that, and I'm glad it's going so well today. When I pulled in, uh, I actually had to go away 
make a U-turn, come back to try to find a way to get in. And then I was able to finally get in because there was so many cars and people. So that's good. Um, that's really, really good. So another pop that I was able to pick up today that they had a great deal. One of the sellers outside, I didn't even catch his name. I don't even remember it now. Um, but he had an amazing deal on it, honestly. And I just, I saw it. I've been wanting it and I couldn't pass it up. Is Weapon X from X Men. Uh, this is a Target exclusive, and you can see him. He's in his whole entire. This is the moment where they pretty much dump him into the tank full of water. And, well, he comes out with blades and he's wearing the helmet. Really happy to have this guy. Um, above all. So another one I was able to pick up. This is actually one of the first uh, collector core boxes that came out for Marvel. And this one was in it. And this is uh, Secret War Store, which if you know, you know who this is. It's not your regular Chris Hemsworth Thor. It's actually someone else. Um, so... Happy to have that one as well. And the last pop that I was able to pick up today, which I was happy to get um, at a great price too, it's uh, the Squirrel Girl from Marvel. Uh, she actually has the little squirrel right there inside with her. Um, you guys can see it there. She actually, it's separate from her, so you can actually take them out, and she'll have both of them. So really happy to have that as well. Um, so yeah, so that's it for Funko Pops this week. Uh, obviously today was a larger, uh, thanks to Uncle Figs and, you know, having them pop and swap me, he was able to facilitate me getting, you know, a few pops that I was missing and I needed and I wanted, especially some of the LG pops. Uh, really happy for these. Um, uh, he X Men Weapon X will definitely fill the void that is here that was left by my Emma Frost that got signed by Chris Claremont, the creator of Emma Frost, and she's now up in my upper shelf where the all the hard stack pops are. So moving on, uh, not only the only order of business that we have. So. Put her right there. That works out. So next up, you know, there's not many comics this week because I was doing some. Uh, this week was a lot of, uh, um, I guess, more supply than anything else. So I got a lot of BCW archival bags that I need to put books in and keep going because, well, you know, we're constantly adding and moving books and things like that. And I ended up with ordering three of the BCW comic book bins, the plastic ones. Uh, these things are, hey, Jeff, how's it going? Just talking pops and comics here. Um, so it's hard to believe, but in less than, what, in less than a year, actually, I'm at six full short bins. Uh, it all went in less than nine months, I think. And I have enough books that are moved from my desk when I do videos to my bed while I put them back onto my desk. I have books stacked on top of the short boxes waiting. And I had run out of boxes. So I now have three more of these. Um, I got these on Amazon. They're actually not bad on Amazon. They're 20 bucks. And if you have Amazon Prime, you have free two-day shipping, so they come out to about the same price uh, if your local comic store doesn't have them. Um, ironically enough, I had been searching for the last two weeks. None of the stores had them. I ordered them on Amazon, and then I went to Corka on Friday, and they had a bunch of them. So that's just the irony of that. So, yeah, sir. Uh, yeah, Jeff. Uh, I ran out of space 
in all my boxes and I'm trying to reorganize a lot of the stuff too, you know, identifying keys and going through every book individually and things like that. So uh, I'm kind of trying to go through every book, uh, identify if it's a key or not, then rebag it in a mylar if it is, and also try to grade it, you know, from my experience now that I've gotten. Uh, so that way I can start inputting everything inside of Go Collect. I have, you know, 120 something comic books already entered in Go Collect. Uh, that leaves me with only about another thousand to go. So <laughs> it's definitely, a, I'm trying to, you know, give them a rating and, and obviously being conservative on it because at the end of the day, grading is really in the eye of the beholder. Um, you know, we could say a nine and CGC will say a, eight or six so um you know trying to be as conservative as possible but just to kind of have my book somewhat pre-graded so i'm not worrying about it if i go to submit to cgc and things like that to kind of have it already done out of the way and i'm trying to do that with all new books that i get anything that i add the moment i do it i pretty much you know bag it and if it's a key it goes into a mylar um until Everything that I have has been converted to Mylars. Right now, only the keys and, you know, major variants are getting Mylars. Hey, JB, how's it going? So, another thing that I wanted to share with you guys is I picked up this book at Barnes & Noble not too long ago. Um, nope, whoop, easy there, Ant Man. Don't fall on me. So, I picked up this book a while ago. Um, honestly, like, I had to have it. Um, being a Galactus fan, being a Silver Surfer fan, um, yeah, I like the Fantastic Four, but for me, Galactus and Silver Surfer. Uh, to me, anyways, are more important than them. Um, you know, I saw this book, and when I grabbed it and I checked the pricing on it, it had a little bit of damage on the end and whatnot, so they gave me a really, really discount. And this cover is just amazing on the book. Um, if you notice in the back, um, it has Galactus with, you know, Silver Surfer flying and the Fantastic Four is trying to flee from them. So I haven't even opened it. I don't even know what's in it. I bought it because it's just a gigantic book, and I thought it'd be awesome to have and to put on the wall and to also try to read this thing. Um, it doesn't say it's a volume of anything. It says it's just on its standalone. Um, so it has work done by Lee, uh, Jack Kir Jim Lee, Jack Kirby, Bushema, and Byrne. So I'm assuming that this is, oh, okay. So this is the Fantastic Four take on their biggest foe, literally. First, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby introduce Galactus and his enigmatic herald, the Silver Surfer, as they come for Earth in one of the greatest comic book sagas ever told. Next, Stan and Jack bring back the World Eater, but what does he want this time? So this is collecting Fantastic Four number 48 through 50, 74 through 77, 120 through 123, and 242 through 244 that were written by Stan Lee and John Byrne and illustrated by Jack Kirby, John Buscema, and John Byrne. Um, yeah, so I'm actually going to crack the sucker open, and we are going to share this together. Or, well, whoever's on the chat and watches this. So let me get Thanos so you can stay there. Um, let me crack this sucker open. All right. This is a it's it's a heavy book. Okay. 
So this thing is pretty badass. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I feel like this is a comic book book for blind people. Um, you're going to see in a second. So have you ever like seen those remote controls that are like this big for a TV that have the big buttons? Uh, that's what this feels like. You know, you usually give that to somebody old or like that's like has hard trouble seeing closely because that way they can make out the buttons because they're so big. Um, this thing's massive inside. Uh, it really, really is. It is actually very, very big on the writing. Um, yeah. So let me stand this thing up. So that's the first sheet you get. Um, the first sheet, obviously, is a black sheet. But the first sheet that you actually get is seeing Galactus. Uh, Fantastic Four, Behold the Galactus. So here we have Fantastic Four. It gives you a small introduction of it. All the artists, all the, the artists, the writers, uh, things like that. And then we go straight into the comic book. And this is like reading FF48. So this is pretty awesome. Um, and you're reading it in gigantic version. This is a huge, I guess you could call it like an omnibus or, uh, cause, I mean, it's not really an omnibus because the omnibus kind of gives you everything. But this is pretty cool on how they did this. So you have all the art. Let's see what other covers they have. Look at this thing. I mean, you have, this is what, FF74, I think it is, that we're looking at here. Um, trying to find another cover. I mean, this thing's pretty awesome. Um, now I got it. Now I can actually read early F, uh, Fantastic Fours. Um, so JB, this book originally cost fifty bucks um, at Barnes and Noble. I didn't pay that. Um, I went up to the to the lady at the register and I was like, "Listen, um, you know, it's kind of messed up on this corner and it's kind of messed up on the top corner." So obviously the you know I'm not I mean I was gonna open it anyways and read it uh, just because it's me you know uh, the book obviously is not in mint condition so it's not perfect but um, I got it I, I want to say like for like twenty five I almost got like fifty percent off or something like that um, so I think that's a great deal even thirty bucks for this book uh, I mean I I think I would have paid fifty bucks either way. I mean, it's a it's a neat it's it's a freaking really neat neat book. Um, it's heavy as crap, but I mean, it's like it's like trying to read. I mean, I I need a I need a table just for this book to read it. This is hilarious. Um, yeah. Let me see what other covers they have in here. Let's see. Go back a page. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, yeah, this is pretty pretty impressive. So this should be fun to read. Oh, look at this picture. Oh. Whoever's a Galactus fan is going to love this one. Look at that. Look at that Galactus. You know, this is the artwork that made... All right, JB, I'm almost done, so I'll catch you on your... Uh... I'll be there shortly uh, for your live unboxing. Don't worry. So, I mean, just look at the art. Uh, that Galactus trying to catch uh, the thing. The Galactus trying to catch the thing is just a beautiful, beautiful image. 
Um, this book is awesome, honestly. Um, actually, I'm glad I bought it. So, yeah. Um, that's really it for this week. Uh, I saw Captain Marvel. Um, I thought the movie was actually done really well. Um, don't worry, no spoilers. Uh, what I will tell you is if you haven't seen it, make sure you stay after the first end credits video uh, because there's another one. So, um, you know, I saw Captain Marvel. I know all of the crap that's been going on with her in the past few weeks before the movie opened and, you know, whatever. Uh, I went because my love for Marvel was greater than my love for her. I really don't care what she said. I have no opinions of it. I really don't care. At the end of the day, I love Marvel. I love what they do. I love their characters, and I'm going to watch the movie. So with that said, I think the movie was done pretty good. Um, I didn't go in expecting anything bad or worse or you know good or great. It's not... Avengers Infinity War, it's not Endgame coming out. Uh, you don't need to see it to, to watch Avengers Endgame. It has nothing to do. This is really, they focused more on her origin um, with a minor few changes that are whatever. Marvel's not been, not been has not been known for doing that, of course. You know, they, they change things sometimes. So... I took it for what it is. It's a superhero movie that's of her origin story. It's a Marvel character. And that's what I took it as. And I enjoyed it, honestly. Um, I think they did really well in it. Uh, I think Samuel L. Jackson did phenomenal in it. And, you know, he was honestly great. And I think the whole Kree Scroll War was actually a pretty great way to bring her or Captain Marvel into the movie because it actually was a great. Great storyline. Um, would I rate it? Uh, it's better than Thor's. Uh, in between, you know, between Thor's and, you know, the Avengers movies are still going to be higher than Captain Marvel for me anyways. Um, but I think it was done really well. Uh, I won't deny that. Would I see it again? Possibly if somebody else wanted to see it. And I'd go with them, but um, yeah, I mean, in the end of the day, it was a pretty good movie. So I would definitely recommend you watch it if you just want to have kind of a filler, something to hold you over till Endgame comes in, what, uh, roughly less, what is it, April? And we're in March, so just over a month, I want to say, month and a week, month and two weeks, I think it is, isn't it like the beginning of April? Um, still good movie to watch. I enjoyed it pretty good, done pretty well. So, yeah, and that's really it for this week. Uh, I'm gonna go offline now and try put together these three BCW boxes that I got and start packing up some more books, organizing, finally putting away books that have been out in the open, not in the open air with sun. Don't worry, they've been in bags, but. Just out of the open now for a couple of weeks. So, yeah. All right. So, thank you for everyone that tuned in. Uh, thank you for everyone that goes on the rewatch. I will be doing a special video uh, probably this week or the next. I want to kind of take part in showing uh, what a beginner would go through submitting their first CGC books, especially if they're signature series or their experiences at a con. Um, I think there's a lot of knowledge out there, but I still think that there's a few things that are being missed, especially for beginners to know, uh, especially since I was one of those and my cherry got popped at Comic-Con Revolution. So, yeah, uh, stay tuned for that. Make sure you comment, subscribe, and like below, and let me know what you think. If you want me to do anything specific or bring uh, any specific ideas or whatnot to life, just go ahead and comment them below and we'll take a look at it. All right. So as always, thank you for joining and we'll be talking as always. All right. See you guys later.